In this video, I want to go through a corporate issuer's CFA level one exam style question on choosing between investment projects when they are mutually exclusive, meaning they can't be realized at the same time, perhaps due to budgetary constraints. So if this is something you want to get right in the exam, I suggest you keep watching and let's get solving. So this is the question which I want us to explore Danielle Beck, a CFA Level 1 candidate, is charged with selecting investment projects to be undertaken by her employer. Speck has been granted a total budget of 30000 for projects to be initiated within the upcoming quarter and has identified two investment opportunities where, whose cash flows sorry, uh, are presented below. And you've got the cash flows here, assuming that each opportunity may be realized once only and that the cost of capital relevant to either project is 12%, Beck should recommend that her employer, and we've got some uh, possible uh, recommendations over there, please, please appreciate that the uh, limit uh, we're facing here is that we've got a total budget of 30,000 only and a single project can only be done once. Now, project B itself requires an initial outlay of 30,000, so that basically eats up the entire budget. Project A requires um, half that, but it cannot be done more than once. So you either invest 15,000 in it, and you can't replicate it for the second time, and that also completely eliminates your ability to do project B. Um, because you've run out of budget. So let's see uh, what the recommendation should be. Now, what I want us to do is straight away go to the calculators and use the cash flow uh, worksheet in combination with NPV and IRR functions to input this data and compute the relevant, um, the relevant metrics. Okay, we'll be working with the cash flow worksheet. So let's press CF. And as you can see, I've got some data here from a previous question. So always clear the cash flow worksheet first when you're switching from question to question. Second, followed by CE stroke C at the bottom of your calculator. Remember, you've got to be in the cash flow worksheet for this to actually clear the data. As you can see, it's now zeroed out and I'm starting with project A. So inputting 50,000, uh, 15,000, sorry, negative followed by enter as the CF0, down arrow once, then I've got 7,000, and sorry, I did, you see, I did 700 there, so I can easily overwrite this, 7,000, enter, that's accepted as C01, uh, press the down arrow twice, omit the frequencies um, uh, input, I don't think you're really going to use it that much uh, in the CFA exam, I've never used it, to be honest, when I took the exam. And as obviously, I've, I've done my uh, CO2 um, input, and now the final one is going to be 9,000, followed by enter. Just quickly review what we've done here. 7, yes, 15, seems good. Right, now, as you may remember, the actual computations happen next door. That's under the NPV um, key. And over here, I've got my... Um, I've got my, um, I'm prompted to basically provide the calculator with an I, that's a rate of interest, and that's going to be 12%. That's what the question tells us. So 12, enter, uh, down arrow once, we're at the NPV, um, or the place where the calculator is ready to compute NPV, just press compute, and out it pops. That's the NPV of the project. So maybe let's write this result down for project um, A. The NPV result is a positive 4034. So brilliant. This project should be accepted on its, you know, based on its NPV. And I guess, um, and you should be getting this as well, you should be expecting this. If the NPV is positive, the IRR, which, I'm, which I can compute simply by going next door and pressing IIR, IRR following, followed by compute, is, well, it's not just positive, it's higher because it's 26.4. It is higher than the um, required rate of return or the cost of capital. The fact that the project produces a rate of return which is higher than the cost of the capital 
being used to fund it uh, gives rise to it generating additional value for the company. Let's do the same for project B now, see how good that one is, if it's good at all. Okay, so back to the cash flow, but this time completely different data. So once again, second, followed by CE stroke C to clear the uh, data from the worksheet. And uh, let's provide the fresh inputs. So that's 30,000 negative, sorry, negative, followed by enter, down arrow once, 13,000, enter, down arrow twice, 14,000, enter, down arrow twice, 18,000, enter, let's just review the entries, 14, 13, 30, seems good, so jump next door to NPV, press, com well, not press compute, provide it with the um, a rate of uh, return, which is the cost of capital here, press enter to confirm your input, down arrow once, now compute, and as you can see, this is 5,580 approximately, it's positive, which is a good sign, and the IRR is going to be, well, 21.9 quite high but not as good as the previous one so let's just make sure we know that these are the IRRs because I didn't really label them properly I did label the NPV okay so how do we now make decisions um, with regard to what we should be accepting what we should be rejecting if both these projects could be done if there was no limitation in terms of budget for example you would basically want to do both projects because uh, both of them add value to the company. We were told that each one can only be done once, so they can't be duplicated, multiplied in any way. And if you had the budget, do both of them. If you had the ability to do project A twice, so, you know, multiply it, do it twice because it alone generates more NPV. Now, a single project A costs 50,000, 15,000. And if you could do it twice, you would be within the limits of your 30,000 budget. And doing it twice would generate value of twice, two times 4,034, which is better than 5,580. At the end of the day, decisions between mutually exclusive projects are all about choosing the one that adds more value to the business. Even though project A kind of wins because it has a higher IRR, it's more profitable, it gives you more extra value for the amount of money that you put in. At the end of the day, doing it wouldn't generate as much added value, which is measured as NPV, than project B. And based on NPV alone, in the case of mutually exclusive projects, you would go and choose project B. So let me write down this decision rule. For mutually exclusive projects, the uh, decision is choose the project with the highest or higher NPV, obviously providing that the um, NPV is positive, so, you know, higher positive NPV, of course. Uh, if the NPV is negative, um, it may be higher than something else, which is also negative, but don't choose it, it would destroy value. So in this case, we ought to be uh, choosing project, definitely ought to be choosing project B, so rejecting project A and uh, accepting project B, and that's answer C.